Hi, Sam Carpenter here, author of the book Work the System, The Simple Mechanics of Making More and Working Less, which is aimed directly at business owners and managers. I'm here today with Josh Fonger, my business partner in our company Work the System Consultants. In a question and answer format, taking maybe 45 minutes, we're going to lay out the fundamentals of the Work the System method and the system's mindset. I've found that successful CEOs are pragmatic and bold, but also intrigued in the philosophy of business building and generally how to add value. They're almost always very nice people, and they're keenly interested in how things work, how things unfold. That's what this video is all about, the adoption of a better vision of the mechanics of how things work and cultivating a more efficient mindset in order to make things better. Simply stated, the Work the System method is a way of life based on a more accurate perception of the mechanics of the world. The system's mindset and the Work the System method have everything to do with the simple foundational mechanics of how reality actually unfolds. It's not mystical or theoretical. It's believable and pragmatic. And because reality operates in the same way everywhere, all the time, the stance and principles apply to business operation, health, relationships, everything. So, this interview video is an introduction. It will definitely provide red meat for the CEO and manager, but there's much more in my book and at our website, workthesystem.com. If you'd like to download a free audio of this interview, go to the website and under resources, you'll find the link. You can follow directions to also download unabridged versions of the book, both in PDF and audio format. Thanks for watching. Now, let's get started. Josh will lead off. Hi, this is Josh Fonger, and I'm here with Sam Carpenter, author of Work the System. And today we're going to be having a conversation about the systems mindset. So Sam, what exactly is the systems mindset? Well, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of filtering everything that happens in your life. And we talk a lot about business, but this has to do with relationships and health and everything. You start from a place and you work outwards from a basic premise and the systems mindset is just a different way of looking at things a deeper way of looking at things in fact we'll get to it I'm sure here but we talk about going one layer deeper in the reality you live in and it's not woo woo and it's not mystical or anything it's a very logical sensible way of looking at your business or your health or your relationships to get things straightened out to to get what you want out of those entities you say life is a collection of systems what do you mean by that? Well, look around. We're in this studio, and there's three cameras going. There's you. <laughs> there's me, these bodies we have, the lighting. Uh, if we went into the, the bathroom, I'm sure the water, if we turned a tap, the water would come out. The electricity that's uh, in the walls of this building. Uh, there are systems surrounding us all the time, and they're separate from each other. Like the water in the tap doesn't have anything to do with the camera over here. And your physical functioning of your body doesn't have anything to do with mine. And you can talk about a car, you can talk about anything you want. Well, let's talk about a car. So uh, there's a car radio and then there's the brakes in the car. They have nothing to do with each other. They just happen to be in the car together. So what we do in a business, or in a relationship or even with our personal health is we take things apart down to their fundamental elements and this is in a business situation you would isolate the systems of the business what does answering the phone at the front desk have to do with interviewing somebody for a job nothing and so the systems mindset sees the whole world as a collection of independent systems and suddenly the world starts to make sense and so many people go through their lives or in operating their business, for instance, thinking life is a, a mass, a confused mass of sights, sounds, and events. That's not really true. It is a collection of very orderly, logical systems. And you apply that to your life, and it works. You start to get what you want. The confusion drops away. There's less fire killing. So are you offering like a, a magic pill here? You look at your life differently, and then all of a sudden everything changes? Is that, is that what this is about? I get asked that question and the truth is yes. <laughs> it is a magic pill. Uh, but again, it's not mystical and it's not magical. It's very logical. And I hope in the course of this interview that we can get to the point where our viewers see that. 
that we can face our lives in a way that's completely logical and sensible. You frequently talk about separating emotions and the mechanics. What, what does that exactly mean, the emotions and separating those? Well, in this Western society we inhabit, there's so much keyed up about emotions. Am I feeling okay about what I'm doing? Uh, am I being PC? <laughs> am I hurting somebody's feelings? Uh, am I being a good person? And that's all important, but we do get carried away with that to the point where we need to go back and look at the mechanical structure of our lives. How are things going money-wise? How are things going in the business? How about my health? And separate ourselves from the emotion so we can get to the mechanics. I'm a mechanical guy. There's plenty of authors and speakers out there to talk about feeling right and feeling good and, and all that. I am more interested in the mechanical aspects of things. It's not that I dismiss the emotional as being unimportant. It is. But I'm a mechanical guy. Here's the thing. If we can get the mechanics of our lives straightened out, for instance, have plenty of money and plenty of time by paying attention to the mechanics, the good emotions and the happiness will come along. And I kind of put the mechanics in front of the emotions. And a lot of gurus out there, and I'm not calling myself a guru, but a lot of people who are proponents of having a better life say you need to get your head straight first. My contention is no, you need to get your world, you need to get your world straight first. And we can try to feel good and try to feel emotionally swell, but if we can't make the mortgage or we're having a fight with our significant other, or our car is breaking down, it's real hard to get the emotions right. So let's get the mechanics straightened out and the emotions will come along afterwards, but we need to separate them. So it sounds like what you're saying is the emotions are a result. And so if you get the steps, the mechanics right, the result's gonna happen, the great emotion's gonna happen. You don't start with the result, you start with the steps to get there. That's right, it's a little bit of a reverse mentality than the standard Western uh, self-help stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of getting the mechanics right and the good emotions will develop from that. And we'll talk about it in a little while, but I used to work 100 hours a week. I had no money. Now I work two hours a week and I have more money than I need. It's a lot easier for me to function and be happy in that condition rather than struggling all day long. So you've actually applied this in your life. What, what have been the results? You kind of briefly hit on that, but what would you say the key results are of applying these principles? Well. I've had this business, it's, a, it's an answering service, kind of a call center. I won't go into the details about it, but it, it's a 24-7 operation. I have lots of people who work for me. And I spent 15 years, 80 to 100 hour work weeks. And I got this insight about how the world is actually put together and applied it. And I was able to, in a very short period of time, uh, as I mentioned, re reduce my hours down to a couple hours a week and make plenty of money and have a more relaxed life because of this ability to see the separate systems in my life. You say that fixing problems is just a matter of a tweak or a mindset tweak in your life. Can you explain that further? Most people see their lives as a, a mass of confused sights, sounds, and events, fire killing all day long. I like to use the, the uh, analogy of the game of whack-a-mole. The moles are coming up mm -hmm. and you're whacking them with a the mallet and they come up faster and faster and faster and we're chasing from 6 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night trying to balance the family with the work, with the money, mainly killing fires all day long. If you can see your business, your life, your relationships for the separate systems they are and the separate subsystems that compose those primary systems, you're able to fix those separate su subsystems one at a time and the fire killing stops. Mm -hmm. And you're able to delegate, automate, discard things that aren't useful and get your life to be very organized and very principled and you get to get what you want out of your life that way. When you consult with clients, is this why you always start with a breakthrough day where you work in the mindset first? Always start with the mindset. So in order to properly apply the system's mindset, you have to have it first. And so in my book, the first third of my book is about acquiring the system's mindset, this ability to see the separate systems. And then from there, we go system by subsystem by system by subsystem and fix them separately 
and work through to where a person's, for instance, business is completely documented, organized. Everybody within the business knows what's going on. The customers know what to expect. It's just totally organized. And you can think of companies anywhere that are totally organized and you can walk into a restaurant and know they're totally disorganized. And nine out of 10 businesses are quite disorganized. So for those watching this who have not read your book, can you share the, the story or the insight or how this came about, this great idea? <laughs> well, uh, as I mentioned, I had had this uh, call center for 15 years. I was working 100-hour work weeks. I was on all kinds of uh, antidepressants, finally Ritalin. My doctor said I was depressed. No, I was working 100 hours a week and I was doing everything. I was fixing computers. I was hiring people, I was going up to the bank and begging them not to bounce a check on me. I, I could do everything. I could do everything and I was very proud of myself. It was quite heroic. And, uh, but it took a toll on me mentally and physically and after literally a decade and a half of 80 to 100 hour work weeks, I was lying in bed one night and I knew I was going to lose the business in the next week because I was going to miss a payroll. And funny thing, if you have a business and you miss payroll, the people don't tend to come to work the next day. And remember, this is a 24-7 operation, and I couldn't have that happen. I was going to miss the payroll in about a week. And I laid there and I gave up. I absolutely gave up. I was not going to be able to get it together. After 15 years, at 50 years of age, I was going to lose my business and be a single guy, single custodial parent of two kids, with no skills and starting over. And I, but I laid in bed that night and I realized that was the way it was going to be and I gave up. For the first time in a decade and a half, I gave up on my business. And uh, as I laid there, knowing for sure I was going to lose the business, I had an insight and I don't know if it was a metaphysical thing or I was dreaming or what it was, but I saw a table and I saw on the top of that table, this is three o'clock in the morning, it's dark in my bedroom. I saw pieces of something on that table and as I examined them in my dream or whatever I was having, I realized those were separate pieces of my business and they were processes. How we answer the phone at the front desk, uh, how we let somebody go, how we handle a client complaint, complaint. I was able to see the separate pieces of my business and not only that, I saw that they were processes. In a process, and let's put this visual up right now. Here's a process. So you see one leads to two, two leads to three, three leads to four equals a result. And there may be 10,000 steps and there may be seven steps or there may be four steps, but this represents the separate systems of my business. And I saw that that night, that they were enclosed and what if I could spend my time in the one, two, three, four part making the process exactly what I wanted it to be and get the result that I wanted? And that's what I saw that night, the separate systems of my business, and really it went to the rest of my life too, my health, my relationships. If I could separate the separate systems of my life into components that could actually be worked on and improved, and we use this term system improvement. What if I spent my whole day, every day, on system improvement, improving the processes of my business, directing them properly so I get the results I want, and then making them super efficient so those results come easy? That's what I saw that night, and I was never the same. That was 13 years ago. That point changed my life. And when we talk in the first part of my book about getting it, that's what I'm talking about, getting that your life is a collection of separate systems. Sam, can you just put this in a nutshell for us? Sure. So simplicity, first of all, I haven't mentioned this, but this is all very simple. Uh, we want to go down to the basic mechanical simplicity of life, and that's what we're doing here. And to see life as a collection of systems is maybe the simplest thing we can do. So you separate the systems you see your life as a collection of systems and what I want to say here that's very important that we don't miss is that when you can see the separate systems you see that they all work very well for instance I could get up and go into the bathroom and turn the water on I guarantee it will come on the water will come on the power is working our miraculous bodies are sitting here communicating billions of cells and trillions of electrical signals going off every second. That's amazing. And what you see is that life is actually 
0.9% perfect. And the media would have you believe otherwise. Your family would have you believe otherwise, that everything is all screwed up. But what happens with the system's mindset is you get a real appreciation for the perfection of life. You look at nature, how beautiful a dance that is. And you look at everyday affairs. We came together in the studio. We planned it a month ahead of time. We all came together, took some time to set up the cameras, get the, get the uh, sound right. But look at us. We're doing it. Everything's working perfectly. And what happens is in lives, and you really see this when you get the system's mindset, some things don't go so well sometimes or the way we think they should go, but they are the product of systems, step-by-step -step linear processes over time ending in a result. And so what you do is the, the things that aren't going well, maybe in a relationship or maybe in a sales pitch in business or whatever it is, or maybe your health, you find out what's wrong and you tweak those little things. Most everything's working fine. For instance, let me give you an, for instance. Uh, when I uh, first got the system's mindset, my physical condition wasn't very good. I went into my doctor and my doctor said, Sam, you're depressed. Here, take these antidepressants. I went through six or seven antidepressants and then Ritalin. And I got this insight after realizing that wasn't going to work. Remember, I'm working 100 hours a week, and yes, I'm depressed over that. <laughs> but that wasn't the problem. It wasn't my depression. My depression was a result of what was going on with me. I said, Doc, I want you to give me every blood test known to man. Every single one. He says, that's like the standard screening is 80 blood tests you really want. I don't think you need to do that. Here, try this other. This really happened. He said, try this other new drug that came out. And I said, no. If you don't do it, you've been my friend for a long time, doc, I'm going to have to go to another doctor to give me blood tests. I'm not asking for drugs here, I just want the blood tests. And he, so there, there I was taking my body apart into the separate systems that, that my body was. We are made of chemicals. And so it seemed logical to me if you did as many blood tests as you could and you fell out of the proper parameters which the medical community has established, you got a problem. And what happened was I had four or five, I forget, it was four or five different chemicals in my body that were out of whack. And through over-the-counter supplements and through prescription supplements on a couple of them over a period of two years, I brought those uh, four or five chemicals back into the proper balance and it changed everything about me. And so that's what I'm talking about is taking things apart and seeing that my, I saw that my body was working 99.9% .9 fine with just a few problems in there. And at the same time I was fixing my, my business, taking my business apart, fixing the processes one by one by one, making all those processes perfect. And really most of the processes in my business were fine. I just needed to tweak certain ones and my, my uh, work week came down, my health was getting better, I learned how to sleep. This is another thing I did. I went to a doctor who specialized in people who couldn't sleep. I was sleeping three hours a night, and almost instantly I was able to sleep six hours a night, and you can imagine what that did for my health. I broke things down into the separate pieces. And again, and I'll finish this up by saying, what you find out is 99.9% .9 of everything is working just fine, and using your body as a prime example. You often use the term one layer deeper. What does that term mean? That's one of my favorite terms of all time. And let's put this graphic up on the screen. So you see this house, and it looks like just a regular small 1,200 square foot house. It's a cutaway view. And in that house is a person. Let's say it's you. So Josh is in the house. There's the dog. There's the couch. There's the TV. There's Nikki, your wife, there's all the things that you have in your possession and all the relationships you have and your health and your job and your car, totally metaphorical here. So there you are in that house and you're shuffling around the results of your life, trying to get things to work out right, trying to make a little more money, trying to take care of the kids, trying to be a good spouse the whole thing. And this is how most people go through their lives, shuffling, shuffling around the results of their lives. But we'll look at this cutaway now. You see there's a basement. So in the basement is machinery. And these are the systems of your life. 
These are the processes, and they're constantly working 24-7. Most people don't know they have a basement in their house. Remember, strictly metaphorical. This is a total analogy. But there are one, two, three, four step processes that are equaling results, whether you see them or not and whether you like them or not. And so my message to you would be, using you as the guinea pig, is find the steps in the secret door, go down in the basement and work on that machinery so that machinery is producing the results you want upstairs. Because that machinery is always working and it is producing results in your life and are a lot of times going to be random if you don't see the machinery. And so the system's mindset is all about going down in the basement, working on the machinery that creates the results upstairs. And that's what this is about, health, relationships, businesses. And that's what we do when we go into a consulting job with a business. We can see immediately what the problem is because we see the machinery that's creating the problems. And again, most of that business is probably just fine, but there's probably some killer processes in there that either don't need to be there or need major tweaking. A lot of times it's a person that needs to leave is because people are systems too, remember? Everything is a system. But we can go into a business in no time at all because you and I are really good with the systems mindset thing and see what the problems are. We go right to work on the biggest problems first. And that's what I did. Let me, let me digress a little bit into another example. But when I figured out what I needed to do that night, late that night, I went down to the business and I told my two managers at that time, look, you know we're going to lose the business if we don't do something. So what I want to do is I want to separate the business here into the, the biggest problems first. We're going to take these processes that are the most problematic and we're going to fix them one by one. And it had to do with the deposit procedure, the biggest problem. And I won't go into the details, but I had been helping put the deposit together for 15 years, about two hours a week. And in other words, money comes in the front door in envelopes. We have to credit each a uh, check that comes into the proper account and get the money up to the bank for my call center. And uh, we were losing deposits. The doctor in, in Texas, his payment was accidentally covering the funeral home in California. We had all kinds of problems with this process. So what we did, the two managers and I, we sat down and in eight hours over a period of three days, I remember well, we put together a document of the 53 steps it took to do a proper deposit. The money comes in the front door, you open the envelopes, it's 53 steps by the time we got the money up to the bank and the deposit slip back and in the file. And we tweaked that over a period of weeks and got it to be perfect. And all three of us did the deposit in exactly the same way now because each one of us had been doing it a different way and each one of us had problems in our our methodology so we all agreed we'd do it the same way we all agreed if any one of us had an idea of making the process better we would talk with the other two and make a tweak in that document and documentation is critical in a business you have to have documented processes so what happened long story short is that I had been, okay, I had been doing this two hours a week for 15 years. And when we finished with this document, after a couple of weeks, I looked at it and I thought, I don't need to do this anymore. I'm going to give it over to this other employee that I have. And that was 13 years ago, and I've never done it again. If you do the math, two hours a week for 15 years is a long, long time. Now, for 13 years, I haven't had to do that. It's almost a year of 40-hour work weeks. I chopped my 100-hour work week down to 98 hours now. And that's what we did with all the subsequent systems. Bam, 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 bam. So eight hours of my time has saved me almost a year in overall time, over two hours a week, over 13 years, that's what it's done. And that's what I did. That's a good illustration of what I did with my business all down the line over a period of a couple of years it took me, because I had to figure this out as I went, to get my work day down to just minutes. Two hours a week is what I, what I spend. And that's what you do with your health, that's what you do with your relationships, and that's especially what you do with your business if you want your business to be efficient. No more fire killing. Everybody knows what's going on. If there's a problem, it's typically not a person problem, it's a system problem, and things go well. And you have to establish direction, and we have certain documentation that has to be done. Uh, it's document heavy at the beginning, but after a while it's not. But you want everybody in your organization to know what's going on, 
you and your wife. Uh, you don't have to document everything, but you both want to be able to isolate the systems of your relationship and fix any problems, whether it's the toilet seat isn't being put down or the toothpaste cap isn't being put on. In a relationship, a lot of times the problem is a very simple thing. Everything's working fine except for a few little processes that aren't working very well. And that's what you get with the systems mindset, the ability to see the dysfunctional systems and the ability to fix those. And remember, 99.9% .9 of everything in a relationship or your body or your business is going very, very well. Another key aspect of the work the system method is standing outside and slightly elevated. I see that throughout the book. What, is that, what does that mean? Yeah, it's another uh, analogy. So I just talked about going one layer deeper down to the machinery that creates the results in our real lives. Another way to look at this to get really good perspective is I like to say, well, let's use a business again. So you need to get outside your business, and you'll hear it all the time. You need to work on your business rather than in your business. That's exactly right. You want to pull yourself out of the business to where you're slightly elevated and looking down on it like it's a chessboard. You see the separate systems. Remember the table we talked about in my dream. You want to be able to reach down on those processes, pull a process off the table and tweak it and then insert it back in. And so outside and slightly elevated is the perspective you want, not just on your business, but on everything. And Eckhart Tolle talks about it in his book, The Power of Now. He said, I realized one night there was two of me. There was two of me. There was me, and then there was the person talking to me. And that's exactly true. So what you do is you separate yourself from the daily ins and outs and ups and downs and the mechanics of your, your life, and you look down on it objectively as almost another person. And that's what outside and slightly elevated is. And so when I went down to the business that next day, and by the way, I did make the payroll. I found a way to make the payroll. I borrowed money. I uh, had a couple of people not cash their checks right away. I was able to get more money on my credit card. But I went down and I said, we're going to look at these problems as external to us. And I didn't use that elegant phraseology back then, but I said, we're going to look at our systems separately as if there were a board game, as if, as if it was whack-a-mole, and we're going to treat them as separate elements from us, and we're going to withdraw out and as managers look down on what we're doing. And you'd get your, all, you get all of your employees to do that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. What about the term system improvement? What, what does that mean? Ah, my favorite phrase in the whole world, system improvement. So if our lives are made up of separate systems, and I've illustrated a number of examples, let's talk about a business. So in my business, we had about 300 separate systems, how we answer the phone, how we interview somebody. We broke it down. Of course, each one of those systems had subsystems we worked on. If we go back to this idea that one leads to two, two leads to three, three leads to four equals a result. In other words, there are steps that happen over a period of time to equal a result. What if we spent our whole day working on the processes that ended up with the results. And remember, most people don't get that. They're shuffling around the bad results of unseen and therefore unmanaged systems. But now with a systems mindset, all you do is you live in the systems that create the results. So system improvement has to do with working on the one, two, three, four part. Let me give you an example. So let's talk about an app on a smartphone. The apps are updated. You get new versions all the time. You see, oh, there's an, a version update on this particular app or that. And if you don't pay attention to it, you could have 12 version updates on apps that don't have anything to do with each other, right? They're separate systems. And so you go through the process of updating the app. And it feeds the software in, and you can see it on your smartphone that it's updating. This is exactly what I'm talking to people about, about their lives. And go back to the business. What if you did version updates on your processes all the time. What if you spent your whole day tweaking your processes a little bit here, a little bit there? Over time, what happens is the process gets better and better and better. You not only get more results faster, you get better results. And so you spend your whole day in the one, two, three, four part doing a version update all day long. And the results just happen.
Instead of shuffling around results that came from Lord knows where, from this machinery down in the basement, you're down in the basement tweaking the machinery to get the results you want. And guess what? For my machine called Centratel, my telephone answering service, I spend about two hours a week tweaking the machinery. And the people who work for me, the automated processes, the delegation, the elimination of unnecessary systems, all that means I don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. I just guide the ship. And all of my people have this systems mindset and they go about their jobs in the same way. All I do is R&D, guide the ship two hours a week. That's how it works. System improvement is what we do 24-7. In a business, is this more of a top-down effort by management or a bottom-up effort to really make these version updates? You know, this is a beautiful thing because a business is not a democracy. It's a benevolent dictatorship. Somebody owns the business. So they guide the business in how it unfolds. However, me, for example, I don't do all the decision making during the day. I want my frontline people to make those decisions. Everybody in my organization, from me on down through management, on down through staff who's actually doing the work, understands how it works. Now, the people who know the processes the best are my frontline people, either sales or handling the telephone calls. They're the ones that know what's going on, and they know what the processes are. And if they have an improvement, they are paid, literally paid. I won't go into it here, but their income has to do with passing up good ideas through management for management's approval. So this is a very bottom-up kind of a management and in doing that, guess what? The people on the front lines are very enthusiastic because all they have to do is say, I, know, I have a better way of doing this. What do you think? And management will either say yes or no. Typically it's yes. Pass it back down immediately to the front line. They see that their idea was used and your whole organization becomes excited and wants to uh, even increase the quality of the processes even more. So it's a constant flow of new ideas up. We tweak the processes and pass the slightly better processes back down for them to use. Them knowing all the time that they had a lot to do with that process. System improvement, bottom up. So Sam, does the systems mindset apply to parenting as well? Of course, and here's how you look at it. You break your parenting chores down to what, what if you had to boil it all down to what's most important in bringing up a child? And you can go down to two or three things in my opinion. And with the systems mindset, it's easy to see what those processes are. So for me, let's just, let's not go to the third one, let's just do two of them. Uh, your main job is to give your child the ability to develop some backbone. So when they're 18 or 23 or whatever age you feel you want to cut them loose, uh, they're able to sustain themselves. You don't want your child at 35 living at home. It happens a lot. So number one, you want your child to be able to become a self-supporting human being. And number two, you want your child to respect other people and to respect themselves. And so all the other decisions you make as a parent should conform to those two requisites that you want to instill in your child. Again, we're back at the systems mindset of breaking things down into the basics rather than running around. And it, what you don't end up doing is lavishing too much praise on your child or giving them too much and spoiling the child. It happens all the time, especially in this day and age. You teach the child to have backbone. You teach the child to have respect for other people. And so you take two or maybe three basic objectives in parenting or anything else and you make sure every decision conforms to those basic processes, those basic systems. So there are two important points that we frequently talk about with clients. One of them is simplicity and one is creation of value. Can you explain those further? Okay, the simplicity thing, you and I deal with this all the time with uh, executive management. Look, stop complicating things. You don't even need this department over here. <laughs> We get them to look at their business in a different way. You don't need 20 people in your IT department. You need eight. And you go to the processes and you go down to the root, simplest functioning of each process. 
And if this is a whole other matter, but in a business, if you're not creating value, you're going to fail. You've got to create value for others. If you're just churning away, and government is a perfect example, uh, we need our government for clean air and clean water and military and roads and so forth, but so much of government is make work. And there's not a lot of value created. In a private enterprise, and you know how I'm a big proponent of free enterprise, you need to be creating value for others so they will give you money for that. And a profit is okay. But you've got to create value. If you're going to be in business, if you're going to stay in business, you have to create value. And it's just a good thing to create value for other people no matter what you do. I have a nonprofit overseas. That's creating value. That gives me a lot of satisfaction and I am doing good. I am helping other people. Always create value. Always keep it simple. Sam, talk to me about attributes. Okay, I love this topic. So somebody is making their way through the business world, for example, and they're in their mid-30s. Uh, they have a master's degree. They're good looking. Personal charm is great. They belong to all the clubs. And boy, they work hard. Those are attributes. Those aren't guarantees of success. We all know people who aren't very smart who have a lot of money. And we all know people with not exactly a charming personality who have a lot of freedom. Don't confuse attributes with the machinery. Remember the machinery down in the basement is what needs to be taken care of. It has nothing to do with human personal attributes. And people get carried away with, this isn't fair, I should be doing better in my life. Look at all this I've got going for me. I've got a beautiful wife. Um, I know all these people, but I'm still not getting it. That's because they're not working on the machinery. The machinery doesn't care about the good looks and the charm and the, the Harvard degree. It doesn't care at all. It just wants to produce a result. And that's what the machinery does. That's what the systems do. That's what the systems, process, machinery, all the same thing wants to create a result. You need to work on the machinery. Great with the attributes, they help, but they're not a guarantee of anything. Sam, being a communications expert, what's your unique take on communications? Well, that's a process too, isn't it? Communicating back and forth. So I've been in telecommunications for 30 years, and what we do in a call center is take information and deliver it to other people. So I think about it all the time. And that's helped with our consulting and, and the other businesses that I have. As CEO, I've spent a lot of time analyzing the system of communication. So how can I communicate with people in the fastest way and in an immediate way? Because what happens is we have meetings, we think about doing something tomorrow, Delay, 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 and we do things POS. And by the way, we don't have many meetings because of the, the wonderful technology and, and protocols that we use. For instance, I could be home at night and I want to leave a message for my entire staff, 35 people. I can get on my smartphone, ch -ch -ch -ch, leave a message, bam, it's done. Right now, I do it right now. And that's one of the traits of the companies. Uh, that I have and the companies that you work with me on is that things happen bam 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 you and I will be having a conversation we think of something I'll say wait a minute Ch -ch -ch, smartphone I'll either type something in or do a voicemail and send it out to somebody or to a whole group and then we continue our conversation things are done point of sale right now they're handled and so what that creates is this situation where when a good idea comes to your head it doesn't just drift off it's actually implemented many times I use my smartphone to leave myself a message I'll think of something dot dot I don't want to lose it there's an application called say it mail it that is incredible say it mail it and I pull this application up to do to do record myself a message hit a couple of keys and bam it's gone all within 10 seconds and it'll be there waiting for me in my inbox when I get to it but you and I and the rest of my staff have an incredible communication system that um, I recommend for any company. And I'm sure the communications in our company is better than 99.9% .9 of all the companies that are out there, and I don't care how big they are. Sam, system improvement, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, is it? Oh, you're wrong about that. <laughs> I know you're just asking me the question here.
you know it isn't, and I know it isn't. It's very exciting once you get into it. But at the beginning, I use this term, boring but true. It's boring but true that working on your processes is a secret to freedom and wealth and doing good in the world. Boring but true, you sit down, you do your documentation, you work with your staff, and bit by bit, you work on your systems as if they were coming to you on a conveyor belt and you make them better and better and better and that's what you do all day long and it is not a boring idea to go from a hundred hours a week to two hours that is exciting that's totally exciting and to take a company with no bottom line and increase their bottom line enormously in just a short period of time here's an example we had a business that we worked on two hundred thousand dollars a month in gross revenue, no bottom line, and in 45 days we put $50,000 a month on the bottom line by doing exactly what we've talked about today in our consulting business. Uh, so it's very, very exciting, but nobody thinks it is, and so the competition isn't out there to do it. It's just processes and systems and becoming super efficient, and it's not flashy, but boy, it's just tremendously effective. So, any last thoughts, Sam? I have some last thoughts, and this is to our viewers. And that is, look around yourself right now, wherever you are. You're sitting at home, you're sitting at work, and look around at the processes, the separate processes that surround you, the people, the functions, the machines, and think about the separateness of them. And when you go home tonight or you go out in the morning to work, as you're driving down the street, think of the separate systems. There's the power pole, the telephone pole. There's, you know there's a sewer line under the street. You know that there's an a airplane going overhead. You know you're in a car. You know you're separate from the car, the, the human body. And see the separateness of your systems in your life. And start to analyze them one at a time. And you're going to find you can fix the dysfunctional ones. Well, first of all, you'll see the dysfunctional ones. They'll be very obvious. You'll be able to fix them and you'll see that your life is 99.9 percent .9 in very very good shape there just isn't that much to fix in fact we use this term tweak you'll be tweaking the systems of your life and very very rapidly getting the results you want so josh thanks i think we did a pretty good job of talking about system mindset system improvement bottom up and uh, i want to thank you for watching us and uh, again, thanks, Josh. It's been fun. So if you want to find out more, you can go to workthesystem.com or you can pick up Sam's book, Work the System, The Simple Mechanics of Making More and Working Less.